Alrighty, fellas, and welcome back. Here we are on the cold tower on the Mac Moon Estate. The cop tower, the clock tower, the clockwork tower. A lot of a lot of comp on this tower, as you might say. Doctor being able to find out the survivors quite early here with the static blast. Hein playing the doctor for paradox, knowing exactly what to do, exactly how to position the static blast, showing why Paradox has picked Doctor here to go against Master in this situation and a, a strong survivor team. We've seen a lot of good chases in the past from Master Survivor. Hein now in chase with Pallet Loop who is looping around the pallet as you might say and a lot of shocks coming through completely denying any use of the pallet and Hein just able to get the hit onto Pallet Loop there, able to apply the Sloppy Butcher, which is being used alternatively instead of uh, Save the Best for Last or Force Penance, as well as uh, Noah for the end game. Which is an one. Yeah, definitely. We got a little bit of regression there as well with our Pain Res and, of course, Corrupt. We can't play a game without it, unfortunately. I think we had a, a period of Leary's games where we didn't have Corrupt Intervention, but now it's back in full force. A nice hit coming through from Drago, D-R-A-G-O, as we are going to continue chasing Bonanzi up towards the other side of the map. We are going on an absolute map tour here, and I think we're going to find another filler pallet up this side, but I don't think there's enough oh, no. distance. We do see Sir coming in for a body, but unfortunately the call was just a little bit too late and he was not able to make it in time. Now we get to find out if it was a Scourge hook and of course it was right there. We see by the token decreasing as Nancy gets put on the hook. A big shock, not just yet. He's considering it. I think he wants to get a little bit further down the map before he does that just to find our survivors, which he's now done. Yeah, Hein has completely unraveled all of Master's plans here, completely denied any hit take. And at this point, Master has already communicated that there's no save the best for last, there's no force penance, and it appears if this sloppy butcher is a perk being run to counter heal heals. However, we see three survivors injured now with Sir taking the hit for Pallet Loop as Hein just continues to tunnel here in this situation. I mean, absolutely toxic gameplay coming through. But it's going to be an effective strategy here, or maybe not. Maybe if Pallet Loop is able to completely put the juice onto Hein here, is it even going to matter? Hein is a little bit lost in the scratch marks, but it doesn't even matter. Pallet Loop gets completely mind gamed by Hein there. Incredibly well played by our doctor, and this is going to be an, an enter here onto Marco as Master tries and tries to go for some resets here. If if I was able to spot all the survivors here in this situation, it could be big trouble. But Hein is not going to be applying any pressure. Instead, just going to take the second stage on the pallet loop just to make sure to secure it and have some extra pressure going. Maybe looking for some more injuries and all, as all three survivors are all reset. However, Hein knows that there's not going to be any gin pressure really as a result. Doctor seems to be in a pretty strong spot. Yeah, I think that's the issue that we have, right? A lot of our players and our teams know if it's a weaker killer or an M1 killer that they can take these body blocks to lengthen the chases of their teammates. But I think what ends up happening is that they get a little bit too excited about the body blocking, not realizing about the sloppy butcher in play, not realizing about the lack of healing perks, and then they're forced to constantly reset over and over, which again delays any type of no way. any type of progress on the gens. Unfortunate. The double save does not come through. We end up with two people injured and Nancy still on the hook and no trade at all. I'm not quite sure if Drago is going to be able to come in and get the one man save on the time, but really unfortunate there for our survivors as we see Pale die on the hook and now uh, we've got two injured survivors as a result. Two injured survivors, a death on four generators as Marco goes down in the corner of the map here. There's not a lot of gen pressure, a lot of survivor injured, survivors injured, 
and there is one generator that's 70% progress, but that's the only generator with progress, really. And this might be a Scourge hook coming through, 25%, bringing that gen all the way down back to 50%. Hine has absolutely insane pressure here. Does see Sir, the other injured survivor over here towards the middle of the map. As Drago probably stealthing to get the save, but it's not even going to matter. Hine has Static Blast and uses it effectively to locate Drago here in the situation and is able to just completely pressure the hook with a shock therapy here. Drago not really able to do much. It's just gonna take spacing away from it as Hein does a light patrol onto Marco, forcing, possibly forcing a second stage and it's, it's really not gonna be easy for master survivors here. You are basically playing a possible 2v1 at this point with the third survivor being hooked, four generators remaining. What are you gonna do here if you're master? Work on generators, trying to trying to give your uh, killer more of a possible fighting chance? Yeah, I think the play here is just to get a couple more points by doing the generators. Unfortunately, we've got Sir injured and he's not able to get a reset. Uh, here, he is in chase. Drago was on the generator and Marco on the hook, leaving Drago the only person able to get the unhook. But unfortunately, the chase is probably not in the ideal place at the moment. So close to this hook, we do still manage to get Marco off of the hook, but it's just going to be replaced. Instead of Marco, we're going to see Sir heading on that hook, and we know now that there's no other progress on generators because Drago just literally popped one before uh, Sir went down. A very strong play is coming through from Herman Carter. Hein really, just really showing why Paradox decided to pick the Doctor on Cold Tower. Seems that Hein is very well practiced with the shock timing, is running the range and detonation delay add-ons. Probably Doctor's strongest add-ons that you can run, although Hein just going to take the endurance hit onto Sir as possibly tries and gets another another uh, down here onto Doctor just for some extra points to get going. Not much gen pressure it's looking like from Master here in this situation. And what do we have here? We have a survivor who's now in the boom status, isn't really able to do anything because of that. And that's a death on Marco. We're in a 2v1 on three generators remaining. Sir finally is able to get rid of the deep room as Drago is stealthing near the main building. Possibly just trying to <laughs> coordinate on where the exit gates are, but the stealth isn't going to matter. I'm just going to be able to locate Drago because of the static blast and able to just shock therapy this out here. Drago not able to dodge any shock. He's gonna take space in towards the main building. Hein doing an incredible job shutting down the main window, but Drago has so much to work with. There's a pallet that Hein gets stunned on. Very well played from Drago. Has the main window to work with as well. Has the TNL walls. Possibly allowing another gen completion from Sir, although Hein does not want to allow it anything to happen here really wants to conserve the points really wants to give paradox survivors <laughs> as much as a chance as possible and currently i mean their win con's not insanely complicated to do i mean three generators completed there's um... definitely more than doable but that's shack pallet gone and time just continues to chase sir here in this situation drago Doing a bit of point teching. And this is gonna be the down on the Sir here. All Hine has to do now is locate Draco, who is leaving scratch marks. Yeah, he has been spotted a couple of nodders there. We are going to be running round call with my Drago B D R A G O. We are heading on over to the filler pallet. Not too much left to work with up this end of the map though. A big pallet there, I think, is asserting dominance, taking the uh, taking the defeat there, not knowing that there's not too much to use in this area. So he's just going to get a little bit of distance, uh, but I think he's going to potentially be going down in the shack because of Heinz' optimal shock timing, and that's going to be absolutely incredible results for a Herman Carter 
on the call tower where we see a 4k at three gens granted we could still see a little sir bleed out unfortunately uh but that wouldn't make too much of a difference it is uh how we see it yeah and it's going to be the 4k at three three minutes 30 seconds to locate sir here i mean it's it's looking like Heinz is going to be able to do it. And yeah, 4K on three generators. Very well played by Hein, showing that he knows how to effectively use Herman Carter in order to 4K a survivor team as strong as Master. And I mean, that is something that I personally would have never expected to see on Doctor. But we have. The Sloppy Butcher proving effective, able to deny heals, prolong the game, prolong the game long enough for less generators to be completed, as well as the 25% regression coming through onto progress generators from the Scorch on Pain Resonance, but not early gen completion. And no one, not even having to be used, time did bring Hex, no one escapes death to the trial, but I mean, wasn't even needed. Maybe a perk like Save the Best for Last would have made this a 4K on 4 generators. You never know. Starting to think that you've got an unhealthy obsession with Save the Best here, Squill. <laughs> <laughs> we did see uh, Noed not get any value yesterday in our match with uh, with Karma and Cynic as well. So I think it's something that people bring in and keep it in their back pockets, but then they're not needing to bring it out. Uh, I, I think our, uh, our Survivor team here were, were definitely... Uh, a little bit impacted by time management, not prioritizing the generators over their body blocks and, and healing there. So um, uh, unfortunate results for uh, Team Master here on Survivor, but in return, you get incredible results for Team Paradox. So I think we do end up with a final score of 28 to four, and we're going to see how Master respond on Killer after a short break. Welcome back as we load into the world's biggest static blast on the coal tower here with El Marco static blasting and then walking into a giant head-on stun. What a way to start a game. We are looking at risk managing the head-ons in this trial today. He's uh, got his teammates Arushi, Hind and, uh, and Wind with him as well looking for uh, three generators, I believe, to win this match. One thing that I see here, Bard, is I see that Marco's running brutal strength hit applied onto Briss there. Very well played for Marco. That's actually a really early hit for Doc. I mean, no power really being thrown. However, brutal strength, is it? Is it worth it on Doc? I don't know if um, I've really seen that before. It's not like Doc has a lot of catch up or anything. Or you don't really have a projectile to throw at survivors, so you're not going to get as much zoning value out of it as you would on other killers like Wesker or the Hunters. But it's definitely going to be interesting to see how Brutal Strength plays out here. All turn is possibly running a perk like Save the Best Last, but it looks like Hein is coming through, taking the hit on for uh, for Brist here. A little bit more successful hit takes this game to uh, than what we saw from Master. Paradox being a little bit more well practiced on the Doctor it seems. So Brist is able to just take padding around the hill all the way over to this jungle gym pallet here, but Marco comes through with a bit of mind game and it's gonna force Wind into taking a hit for Brist. That's Already three survivors injured, and a sloppy butcher died onto all three, but two generators have been completed. So Paradox doing incredibly well here as Wind continues to loop around this pallet here, and that's going to be the down coming through for Marco, first down of the game, and maybe a pain resonance stack coming through, although is it really going to matter a Scourge hook here? I think that's why Marco is taking the opportunity to hook and base and alternatively to uh, hooking on the sports because you already got those three generators complete or two generators completed. So I mean, Marco, at this point, you need to defend any nearby generators. But the thing is, is that I mean, if one generator gets completed here, that's the uh, that's the win for Paradox. Yeah, and we've got quite a quite a tough uh, gen split 
for Marco to manage here with one being right up the shack side and then others around the main building and the hook. He's not even able to play a three gen or anything like he would usually because, you know, here we are. We see it right there before us. We know full well that someone else is on that generator on the other side of the map and that's required for the win condition. We don't need to confirm someone and get someone out of the game as quick as possible. We need to stop three generators from being done. So I think that this is uh, not the right decision making from Marco here. We are going to get the unhook. Oh, what a beautiful time. Through. Beautiful timing there on that cracker. I didn't even hear it drop and I got blinded myself sitting here at 4 a.m. But that's, uh, that's not the point. It's not about me. It's about these survivors doing uh, incredible work here. Unfortunately, oh. not incredible enough as we're just a little bit too late on the body block. But we are downed in a pallet. We also know that someone is up the shack side of the map working on that generator. We are picking in the pallet. And no one's here to help. Yeah, although that might be good judgment coming through from Paradox here. I mean, not going for the Palisade might be worth it just because you are going to be getting the extra chin pressure. And that being said, the generator in the distance comes through. Marco didn't even um, didn't even go for a uh, there, which is kind of interesting. Considering you do have pain and resonance in the scenario to cost to stop the generator from being completed. But... Yeah, I mean, Paradox got the three required generators done. That's going to be the win condition for them as Marco continues to try and turn off her ace win here. Arushi looking to take a hit, however, it's not going to be easy to do. Marco is able to completely deny the pallet. Arushi is able to come through with the hit take in the nick of time as, as distance is made towards the window by wind, very well played. Sounds like there's a survivor on top of the main building there making some interesting noises. I believe that was the that was Arushi. And yeah, Marco, not sure who's Jason here, but has found Arushi who is moving around the tower in front of main. Has another jungle to work with, has a window to work with, but dog, just absolutely shutting everything down, although Rushi wasn't able to drop that pallet. They're still doing such a great job in chase besides these perfect timings on the shots from Marco. I think that that's one thing that we should definitely be uh, appreciative of Marco for is he's got this really, really nice timing and he's prevented so many pallets and vaults from being taken with that power. So really nicely done, uh, nicely done by him. But we have also seen really nice body blocks from our survivor team as well. They're not overdoing it. They're not... Uh, making sure they are making sure that generators are being done at the same time as these body blocks are coming through and the resets are after it as well which is really nice to see if if marco was playing for stages here i think he'd be doing an incredible job i think that the fact that there was a three generator wink on here i think that's kind of thrown him and he hasn't changed his play style according to that i think that uh, playing around the basement at the start of the game was the wrong move to to take for the win con. But if he was playing for stages or setting the win con, a really, really nicely uh, nicely played game. Yeah, but then again, I mean, Paradox is able to get a bunch of generators done and just completely kind of uh, dominate Marco here. And I think Marco just wants to uh, try and finish up this trial plan ahead for next game and see how how master here could possibly come back on their pick which is play so i mean probably not as well from the doctor uh um paradox not a tillery but really bad either not a super predictable pick but i mean i guess it uh it was smart from um paradox just Picking Doctor, practicing Doctor, and getting a uh, getting a win on one set because of it. So a very well played, a very uh, thought out by Paradox. Marco just looking to some to regress some generators. Stall stall Paradox here for as long as possible, but it doesn't matter. Paradox doing an incredibly good job pushing through the generators, asserting dominance, maybe going for some escapes as trial. 
and they've had some pretty big chases as well, time and time again, especially Wind. Wind's done, done a really good job getting the pallet stun, even versus Doctor. He's able to do a really good job just uh, denying the pallet, but it doesn't even matter. Although, Marco, very good mind game with the shock there on the shock pallet, able to completely outplay it. Here's a bit of daughter start to win, knows that he is dead on hook. Will probably just be taking the 1k here. Although, he asked yourself, was, uh, was Brutal Strength really worth the perk slot here, Mark? Yeah, I think that's something to consider as well. He definitely got the value out of Sloppy. Only uh, two, uh, two uses out of the Pain Resonance as well, though. So, you know, maybe we can take some time to reflect after this one and have a look and see if the, the perks that we're running align to our build uh, that we want to use to the win con and then our play style as well. So... Uh, really nicely done by the Survivor team here. I think Paradox came in with a message today and they're certainly sending it by taking uh, set one 46 to 14. Uh, really nicely done on both sides. We are going to be switching sides though. What are we looking at next, Quill? We are looking at a plague game on the suffocation pit. Two crack, absolutely crack play styles and play. I hope Master is able to pull through and show us why they picked the Plague for the second set. But yeah, I mean, we'll just have to see after a short break. Alrighty guys, the Plague vomiting in everything she sees gonna go ahead marco here is just gonna vomit on all generators possible however interesting um interesting corrupt slit you do have a four generator on the bottom sides although two generators both separated from each other not the strongest three gen in the world but it is it is a three gen not the strongest possible though however marco has already vomited on all the generators and what you'll see from a lot of survivor teams versus plague is they'll try and stealth out just to wait for that corrupt go to go away it is a uh, it is a pretty smart play marco kind of predicting that and it's going to go around looking for any survivors possible seems that marco is kind of approaching wrist here although wasn't able to make any sort of find marco just going to go ahead and check all the generators on the main building side of the map while he has a chance but that's cropped already pretty much three quarters of the way used yeah he's having a tough time locating our professional stealthers here paradox have uh, switched up the survivor roster and they've brought in mx and lincoln to help out in this game now so it's nice to nice to always see everyone getting a little bit of play time across the roster when it is a little bit bigger so gg's good job for that one boys we are going to still be looking for where they could be hiding it's quite an old strategy camping out the corrupt right i remember seeing this years and years ago but then i think it just stopped being meta and everyone started uh being quite aggressive towards the the generators and once someone was found everyone would just get on the gens but uh that's one perk down without any value here the corrupt intervention serving absolutely no purpose then for marco to go around and have a look at uh at what type of tiles he's got to work with we do see a missed skill check over there and uh the survivor giving away their whereabouts as they do a little bit of running behind the main building i think that was a, a burst if we saw it correctly bursting on the plague here as we're going to be running the main building i think the communications would be to the team get on the gens i'm in chase and i think that's what we're about to see is that baby no i'm sorry guardian lincoln is running the perk guardian uh very interesting perk i'd say and that's finally going to be the first infection of the game. One thing to note from the stealth is that Paradox here, I mean, they were able to completely optimally position themselves exactly to where they want to be in. And I mean, even though Master has picked Plague here, Paradox is really showing that they know how to play versus Plague. They know exactly what to do. And I believe that stealthing is pretty much one of the best things that you can do because you're able to split up the map optimally. You're able to deny any uh, 
somehow MX did not get infected there. I did hear a few screams, but it looks like there was a bit of desync in that situation. So Marco unfortunately did not get the infection on to MX, which would kind of be huge in this situation if he could get an extra infection. But that's already a generator completed, not a single survivor injured as of yet. And Marco doesn't even really have a perk like the Natophobia to play with here. You're kind of relying on that no way out. And a second generator coming out. I mean, the positioning of Paradox here, absolutely incredible. Marco finally entering Lincoln, who is able to just drop the Pallet Gym here, providing complete safety. And Marco has to get some crazy mind game if he wants to pull off a down here. But Lincoln has the Pallet Gym to play with. Although, doesn't have a filler pallet over here, and Marco's just gonna be able to get the down on the Lincoln because of it. That is a down that could have happened a little bit later, possibly, if some more resources were utilized. But maybe a bit of a miscommunication, not knowing that there wasn't any filler pallet that's on there. And Marco able to get the first stack of pain resonance coming through, so... Still a bit of comeback potential, although one thing to note is that that hook is not in the region. Two generators were removed from the shack side of the map, and Paradox is already applying pressure towards the main building. Although Marco does find out risk here, so crop purge could be useful. We do get a nice hit with the corrupt purge on our survivor here Vris trying to get the uh, perfect angle there through the window but missing oh. a big crouch to avoid it taking an m1 instead the ultimate disrespect not letting the killer use their power and instead taking the m1 we do see lincoln getting unhooked in the meantime though but unfortunately his place on the hook is going to be replaced by wrist here two gens remaining two stages two stacks of no way out three stacks of pain resonance left to play with in the trial so he's uh getting those numbers up a big smack in the back once again by that corrupt purge not uh not enough to get the second one coming through the shack though i think this one might be the time if he takes the window no he's just too good he's too good at dodging the vomit streams incredibly very well played by hein absolutely juicing all the corrupt <laughs> what is happening? Mommy Mommy is getting juiced up here. Okay, what did I just say, bro? But Marco is not able to get a down on the hind. It's just gonna take the pallet out, use the, down, use the apple here to get yet another crop purge going. Another 90 seconds of crop purge coming through here. <laughs> Wrist stealthing in the main building, Hind stealthing by the water tower as MX, the only survivor who is currently healthy. But that was a very good last mine play coming through. Stalling the five seconds that the survivors needed to reposition in the situation and work some more of these main generators. But I mean, you have the map entirely split up. You have two generators on the shack side and you have two generators on the main side. I mean, this is a dream come, come true for our survivors here in this situation. And, I mean, Paradox, time and time again this game, absolutely choking the Corrupt Perch! Oh. Although Marco does finally get the down on the Lincoln, but Lincoln did an incredible job there, just dodging that Corrupt Perch, incredibly strong power twice on a pallet that has, uh, had already been dropped, which is going to definitely help out. Going to stall some extra time as Marco looks for some snowball potential here on to Hine, who is currently injured. Hine able to juke around the wall. Vaults over the pallet, but it doesn't matter. Marco's able to have two downs here in the situation, not anymore, as Lincoln gets picked up. So, very well coordinated by Paradox. Marco's just going to take the hook towards the shack side of the map, where this progressed generator is. And that's going to be the second stack of Fortune Pain Resonance coming through. Um, second fresh stage of the game. Or, sorry, third fresh stage of the game for Marco, but second stack of Pain Resonance. And Marco's really just going to try to look for whatever survivors he can, but... I mean, Paradox has a lot of pressure here.
Absolutely, absolutely. We know that there's a generator on the other side of the map with a large amount of progress. Unfortunately, Hein is hooked next to one with another. Marco, though, plus rep, not camping, uh, managing his way down the other side of the map to find that generator being progressed. A big off star, the pallet fake breaking mind game here. Does it catch? Unfortunately, it doesn't. It doesn't. The helicopter's not going to catch Lincoln today. We are going to continue working. I think uh, Lincoln's a bit fond of that pallet there. He seems to make his way over there every time, but he does find himself a new one to use. More high-intensity mind games coming through from Marco, which may well work. Does he get the hit? He does. Incredible. Yeah, this is going to be the second stage, I believe, coming through on to Lincoln. However, I mean, it's not like Pain Residence is going to do anything here. Even though you have two stacks, but I mean, Lincoln now on second stage. I mean, Paradox here, they might just let Lincoln die. Marco does have this Corrupt Purge available. Force of death on the Lincoln, but they get the save early. Although no Exegate progress really because of no way out coming through. And MX gets caught out. This is the fresh coach survivor. This is the last thing that you would want if uh -oh. you're Paradox here. And that's a down onto MX. This is going to award Marco an optimal amount of points here that you wouldn't really be expecting if you're Master here. But I mean, this is going to give Master survivors more of a fighting chance first. Paradox is played because of the extra points coming through. That's going to be 3 plus 2 plus, plus 1, which is going to equal 6 points if Marco is able to force the death onto MX here. Or, I'm sorry, 3 plus 2 plus 2, I think it is. Isn't it is, it? yes. Yeah. I'm interested to see if they come for this unhook or if they manage to take the uh take the outs and just let poor mx die on the hook yeah either way it's pretty good results for both sides pretty standard here as to what we see on the plague no way out is well and truly over with we've got no other end game perks to worry about we do have a tiny bit left of our power but we've got a refill right next to the hook which may be a little bit problematic if they do want to come in and get that unhook i'm not quite sure what's happening on the other side of the map there i think they've realized that uh it's probably not worth the unhook there considering the uh fully recharged power that we just got so we're going to be saying goodbye to hein and rest as they head on out through the doors lincoln is just doing lincoln things and poor mx will be dying on the hook yeah, Paradox pretty much just would have realized that Marco does have no. enough duration left on the Corrupt Purge to just completely camp it out. And I mean, there's really no chance you're saving versus a fully Corrupt Purge play. And I mean, that's... It was a really good performance from Paradox's survivors. However, Marco was able to pull through with a lot of points for Master there able mm -hmm. to bring master's score up to 18 paradox being on 15 points from the three escapes coming through on survivors that are not fresh hook so i mean it's it's a pretty close game here barn i don't i don't know what's gonna happen here yeah i'm not i'm not too sure who's gonna be coming out on the plague uh, if it's going to be uh, Urushi, I know Urushi likes to play a lot of ranged killers. I'm not quite sure if uh, if the plague counts as that, but I'm excited to see who comes out and how they're going to respond, and uh, and what the survivor team of Master are going to do to uh, to take this win and put us in into the tiebreaker, or if we're going to see Paradox take the uh, two to zero. But either way, we'll take a short break and find out in a moment. Alrighty guys and welcome back to the suffocation pit on the Macmillan estate as Hein breaks the wall the only breakable wall on this map or wait a minute no no one of the two breakable walls on this map the other being located towards the other window but we're just gonna be taking care of those breakable walls early as Hein 
looks around for any survivors, spreading the infection onto all four generators optimally. So that maybe locating the survivor it looks like Hein is going to locate Marco here in this situation. Very early fight for Hein. Ha possibly putting Paradox back in the I shouldn't say back in the game considering they had a really good performance on Survivor as well. But I mean, this is a way earlier fight than last game, and you still have a half of corrupt intervention left. And Marco is just going to continue to use non shock use. Not use the shack pal because oh my god you're gonna make optimal use of distance there from the injury the fact that he wasn't broken and he knew that timing was just amazing Incredible. forcing the m1 there really really nicely done by marco i think that's really uh really powerful move there we are going to be moving on though i think we've had enough fun with marco we want to uh, apply a little bit of pressure here onto drago infecting the pallet hoping that he will drop it, but we should be able to get the M1 regardless. So whilst he's not going to be infected, uh, he is going to be injured. We are still going for the infection, though, by the looks of things, but we're just not, not able working. to make that connect. We're going to continue on through the uh, the main or the mid area of the suffocation pit and head on down to see what's happening on the main building side and uh, if there's any pesky survivors here working on these generators. And there is! Yeah, interesting that um, Hein is playing this way. Hein is trying to get as many infections as possible, although there isn't any um, thanatophobia coming through, so... Is it really worth it as opposed to going for a down? That is the infection coming through on the pallet as pallet does drop that pallet as well. Maybe, maybe could have stalled a little bit more time getting in one because once you're, once you're infected, you're going to get injured anyway. So, although I think pallet is going to get as much distance as possible. Hein, she's going to go ahead and defend these main building generators instead of trying to defend the shack generators the same I believe that it is why Hein indeed went over towards the side. Maybe playing around a possible basement play here. You do have the generator towards the middle of the map, which is a little closer towards the main side. You have a generator by the water tower and one at the main building and one towards the left of the main building. And Hein looking to apply pressure towards his pallets and getting rid of as many pallets as possible, but looks like we've got some stealth gamers here, possibly. Sir, the only remaining healthy survivor trying to deny an infection. You know, it's so funny with all of this uh, killer survivor interaction that we've had and uh, the, the injures and the infections. Yet we haven't had a hook yet. Really uh, interesting to see the pressure that Heinz applying, but uh, looking at the scoreboard, there's nothing to show for it just yet. Uh, of course, Caster's Curse coming in. As soon as I mention it, we will be getting our first hook here onto Marco. Is it pain res? It sure is. And that would have propped uh, on the other side of the map down there. We've also got Eruption on cooldown. And we've got our Corrupt Purge ready and raring to go as our Survivor team is splitting on the gens. Really nicely done. Yeah, Hyde at this point probably looking to play towards the bottom side of the, the uh, shack side of the map. You have a hook there, you have some generators up, and I mean, these main building generators, they are incredibly progressed. Sir, still u using the optimal stealthing from still being healthy, and Hyde is just forced to locate another survivor on one of these main side generators. And it looks like there's some troubles here as the corrupt purge hit just won't come through. Hein just gonna take the kick onto the generator and yeah, I mean there's no no corrupt or there is now one corrupt pull because Drago did cleanse. But yeah, I mean both pulls by default were used. So Hein now just Looking to spread the infection, do Plague's job here, and that is the infection finally applied onto Sir. But you still have Drago who's healthy, and that pool is on the other side of the map. Although there is one on this side as well, I misspoke earlier. And Hein 
Now it's just looking for that fourth infection on the dragon, but will it matter? You don't have the Natophobia here in this situation, and a generator on the bot on the shack side is popped. Corrupt purge is grabbed. Gonna give a bit of an advantage in Sage here, but Drago somehow maneuvers around. Okay, Drago. absolutely fire movement coming through, and how I not able to instantly get that down on the Drago. Drago drops the firecracker. Very good movement coming through. And now what does he have to work with here? Not much. Maybe a window, but it doesn't matter. We're talking about Bommy Mommy here. He's just able to get the down and maybe a basement hook. Yeah, choosing not to go for the basement though, I think maybe looking for pain resonance, knowing how many generators are being progressed now. Uh, haven't really seen much uh, eruption value. Usually you tend to see uh the people using eruption go around and mindlessly kick the gens where hein hasn't done that uh really at all he's tended to be uh in chase quite a lot i think of this game we are going to be picking up the corrupt purge now though and looking around for our survivors thinking someone might be behind the hill there so just sending off a warning shot we can hear a lorry though that is uh, Marco, I think, looping the shack where it all began. I think there's a special place for these people over here at the shack. The crouching is just too powerful, though. Avoiding the two, uh, the two corrupt purge plays from uh, from hind there. So uh, unfortunately, the third crouch was uh, was the charm, and we're going to see Marco being put up on this hook here. We won't get any uh, pain res out of him because he is on second stage, but that allows Hein to kick the generator, apply eruption, and head back on over to the other side of the map where the other gen is just about to pop. Yeah, Hein just looking to grab all of his red pulls, trying to go for as quick chases as possible here. I mean, you can't really pressure generators. It's not gonna be easy. You can't, you do have those two stacks of pain resonance remaining. But you really have to be playing towards quick chases there. And there are a lot of pallets that have been used. You do have corrupt purge of Hellbull. So there is still a chance for Hein here. But you need to catch up in terms of stages a lot faster if you're Hein here. And Sir is just going to take time in using Exhaustion Perk around Shaq. And that's an eruption play coming through. So 10% regression being applied onto the generator. Hein heading towards, I believe, a Scourge Hook over here. And that's going to be a third stack of Pain Resonance coming through 25% onto the most progressed generator. So Hein still going to have a chance here, but there's, there's no Corrupt Pulls left. No, not yet. His, uh, I'm sure he's hoping that Marco and Sarah are going to cleanse oh, yeah. Pepe Loser! Take that, the killer. We do get a blast mine action there as we vomit on the gen. So whoever's going to touch it next is going to get cooties. So uh, I think that'll either be Marco or Sir, unless Pale or Drago do want to risk their, uh, their healthy status and get a little bit infected. I think he's convinced someone is around here. I can't hear anything, but uh, I also have zero game sense. So maybe it's not audio. We are going to be tracking our two survivors over here at the main building. I think we've got uh, Pale over here, and I did just potentially hear Drago as well on the near injured around the main building too. So we do know where the majority of the team is. We've only got one gen left. We've never mind. We've got no gens left. We've got a couple of gates to open, and we've also got a couple of stages left to get as well. If Paradox want to take this win, we've got no end game perks in play for Hein here. So he's really going to have to rely on ending this one. And, uh, and possibly getting a couple extra stages. Drago is not going to be enough for the win con, so he is going to need another survivor, but with that gate opened, I'm just not sure if that's possible. Yeah, gate has been opened, scratch marks, heading towards the gate. Three survivors still standing. Marco gets out, Sir and Pallet Loop all get out for the three out, and that is going to be master taking set number two very well played by master survivors showing that they're well practiced on play know how to get out even as quick as the downs that hein was getting 
with the crop purge were. I mean, the crouch techs were insane. They knew exactly what to do against Blake, knew exactly how to cleanse optimally, how to not cleanse optimally, forcing Hein into being an M1 killer when they wanted Hein to be an M1 killer, and when they wanted Hein to have crop purge, maybe go for some saves, maybe have some survivors healthy. They decided to cleanse, and it really, really worked for Master. They were effectively able to beat their win condition there. And, I mean, outstanding performance from both survivor teams, I think. But, I mean, Master just had an overall better performance, showing why they picked Plague. And we're heading into the tiebreaker here, Barn. What do you think about that? I am excited to see the Demogorgon on the Coal Tower. I think we always love to see Demogorgon in comp. So we're going to bring him on over for you to settle this. Who is going to take it, Master or Paradox? We do end up with a final score of set two of Master 34 and Paradox 30. There's only one way we can find out who will reign supreme and who will take home the win tonight. And that's by going to the Demogorgon set which we'll do after a short break. Alrighty guys, here we are on the Coal Tower, the Demogorgon. I am super pumped to see a Demo Guppy performance here. Arushi has chosen to run Force Penance. I absolutely love that perk. It's incredibly cracked. And the No Way Out as well for some in-game in -game pressure as well as the usual scores of killing residents we've seen that for time and time again on pretty much other killers. It's a really strong part, it's a really strong rewards, um, a good gameplay as killer. But as far as add-ons go, we're seeing the black heart and shredded glasses as we're now in chase with Drago here and Rushi did not get a single pallet, a single hit out of Drago so far, but Drago's just gonna go ahead drop that pallet to him early, get some distance out of it, maybe play towards the windows, maybe play towards the spill- Oh no! I would've got mined in by a, uh, a little bit of a fake out there from Arushi, and that's gonna be already the first hit of the going on the Drago. They might not even be in position for a hit take here, as Arushi is able to use the hill to get even closer to Drago, but a little bit of a, a, little bit of a mind game going on here. And unique pathing coming in from Arnia Drago, who is now looping these TNL walls. Okay. Forced penance being applied. Huge forced penance value coming through. And now you have three survivors all in the same area. You're able to pressure this generator if you're Rushi here. And you've got Shack window available. No hit coming through. Still have the Shack piled up. Little bit of a standstill mind game there on the uh, on the shack window, but a lot of pressure Rushi has so far. Still no downs though. Yeah, still no downs, but we do have uh, two injured survivors. One of them unable to reset because of that forced penance, and uh, Drago making me eat my words as he just gets reset off in the distance there. So we know that that was at least one survivor that was not on the generator up. Big shred here from Arushi, unfortunately, does not connect, though, as uh, as Palais makes it through the window. A big drop of the shack pallet for a little bit extra distance here as uh, the generator pops for his chase. Really nicely done here. Got to make sure that we don't use everything in this area because you can see with the portal set up, I think this is where Arushi is going to be calling home. He is going to be changing targets and heading on over here back to Drago. I think they've got some unfair business yeah i'd say that masters in a in a pretty strong spot in this game so far drago has the main window to work with very strong window um however the breakable wall is already broken i don't think it's gonna matter though arushi does not have enough distance to catch up to drago I'm just gonna go ahead start using the portal start pressuring the gins as much as possible try and delay any further gin progress as arushi still looks for that first down there's already a generator completed. You do have two survivors injured, but there's a lot of gin progress from Master, and I mean, that game's really looking promising. You have this generator by the shack almost completed, and the generator in the distance was completed as a hit is applied on the pallet loop, but it's really no matter because pallet loop is going to have a ton of distance towards the main building here because of that hit through the window. 
So, I mean, it's not going to be easy for Arushi to come back here. You do have some generators around the shack area to protect. That's already a tap coming through into that generator. Arushi not going to kick it again, so that generator not regressing at all anymore. Arushi might look, at, look for the 2.5%, but it's just not going to happen. And Sir falls the window so early that Arushi just isn't able to connect with the hit, unfortunately. And looks like there's some other survivors looking nearby. That would be Marco, who saw that hit for as long as possible. But the hit is going to eventually be applied as it is. Because, I mean, Marco didn't really have much to work with there. Just the rock to loop around. Um, Arushi kind of going for a, uh, a risky step there. Not going to work. Marco just able to drop the pallet. Not getting the stun that he's now it does an incredible job taking a hit, giving Marco some extra distance, but if I remember correctly, there's no pallet for pallet loop to play around with here. And all pallet loop has is a three, but that's three generators completed already. So, I mean, pretty competitive batch here. Survivors have already gotten three generators done and you have your first hook of the game. Hopefully this is, Four well, generators. never mind. We've got one stack of No Way Out, and we did just get Pain Resonance. Now, th this is the thing, right? So we've had some incredible chases, and we've put up a really strong performance from our survivor side, getting those four generators done. But a lot of the resources on the map are now gone, so it does make it incredibly difficult now to have the same types of chases that you were previously. And with that forced penance as well, I don't think we're going to be seeing our survivors taking hits for each other. Bit of vaulting and some upstairs, downstairs mind games here between Arushi and Marco. We do see the squad rolling up, but once again, not there in time. We will be getting the down onto Marco and just uh, pressuring Ada away from the, uh, away from the slug little bit of a crouch check there unfortunately the timing was missed and the m2 baiting out the crouch but everyone seems to be hovering around the uh the slug of marco here to assert a little bit of dominance because there's not too much they were able to do with arushi being so close to them there he is going to be taking a bit of a trip around the water tower here is on to scratch marks there's some blood there as well so whoever is chasing is injured but uh, I think he's going to uh, let the unhook happen and then come on over to Sir here on the Ada at the TNL walls. Yeah, Master playing an absolutely phenomenal game here. Arushi is just barely missing the shred on the Sir as Palloop is able to come in, take that hit. That is going to be the force penance applied. Three survivors injured, although there's no sloppy butcher here or anything. So resets are definitely plausible, although I think Master is looking to just complete that final generator. One thing to note is that Arushi does not have any bamboozle to play with here, so that main window is going to be incredibly frustrating to play around if you're Arushi here. And I mean, Marco probably just going to play the check spots as Drago is found. Looks like Sir did get reset in the distance there. So Arushi just looking for a hit on to Drago, but Drago doing an incredible job just delaying this hit for as long as possible. Puts the pallet down. That pallet's not even instantly broken by Arushi. Arushi going for a mind game and it worked! Very good hit coming out from Arushi, but is it even going to matter? I mean, that's an M1. You're not going to be able to catch up super quick. Although, this could be a fourth injury. Another forced penance hit going on the sorry you have all four survivors injured incredible down from Arushi using optimal distance from the shred and that's going to be a hook on to sir here you're looking to get the hook pressure wait Arushi might be a little greedy going for this hook here maybe no Arushi does make the hook in time third stack of pain resonance comes through 25% onto the onto the main building generator here and all four survivors are still injured barn this i mean master might be in a tricky spot here yeah quite a tough place to be narushi doing his best to bring it back after that really really strong early game from uh from the survivor team and all of those gens popping seem to be at a bit of a standstill now which tends to be what happens 
We're going to be chasing Drago here to the main building. Oh, really, really yay. nice dodge there. Beautifully done by Drago, avoiding that shred. Arushi not wanting to mess around with Drago anymore, I think, and coming back to check on his gens and seeing a little injured Ada running around. I'm not too sure what the play is here, Squill, if they're going to Pepe loser, Pepe loser. Everyone point and laugh at Arushi. Ha ha. I'm not quite sure if they're going to take the time to reset or if they're going to greet the gen the gens in. All gen. Never mind. Never mind. That one missed hit from Arushi there was absolutely vital. You needed to slug there. You needed to be able to pressure all generators, but it just didn't happen. Now all of Arushi has to rely on is no way out, but you're chasing the only healthy survivor around this car. But they're doing a good job laying that hit for as long as possible, but it does finally come through, although no one is pretty much already almost halfway gone. And Marco is going to go ahead and take distance through the main building. Really abuse this window here. I mean, that's the problem with not having Bamboozle. There's not much Arushi is going to be able to do about this. A little bit of um, humping the wall there as Arushi gets stunned by Marco on the pallet. And we might see some hit takes coming through here. No way out, almost gone! Sir does an incredible job dodging the hit there, and Arushi only has three stages so far. Might not even be able to get a kill here if Master really communicates well, takes hits, opens that exit gate, no way else, already gone, and there's absolutely no hooked value coming from it. There's still a stack of pain resins, but all generators are completed, so that's not even going to matter. Arushi just portal towards the other door. Possibly going to catch a survivor off guard here. You do see injured Marco in the distance there. Incredible use of the Demogorgon Shred. Making a ton of distance. Catching up to Marco here. But this main building, I mean, it's been an absolute pain for Arushi to be able to deal with. And Howlip just coming for the hit take. You also have Sir available for the hit take as well. After Howlip takes that, that's going to be forced penance on the Howlip. Sir comes through, takes hit. All four survivors injured, but they're all out. Very incredibly well played from Master. A four out versus the Demogorgon using Black Heart and Shredded Glasses on the Cold Tower. Only three stages. That means if Paradox's survivors can four out with two survivors i mean two stages that's their only chance of meeting a win condition but it's definitely not something that's going to be easy to do barn do you think that paradox will be able to pull through here or is it is it master's game I'm not, I'm not too sure with a, with a score of 19 to Master and 9 to Paradox in three stages. It's incredibly difficult, but I know that we've seen in the first game an incredible performance by our friends on Paradox. So I'm excited to see if they can bring that same momentum back and play for two stages, which would be the win. Let's take a quick break, set that up, and then we'll be back to you with that game. Welcome back to the Cold Tower with the Demogorgon set in what could potentially be our last game of the evening. We are looking for a survivor team having two stages and four people escaping to take the win for Paradox. Alternatively, Marco looking to get four stages here to win the trial and the set. We are going to be Looking for a survivor after breaking that wall at main. A little bit of preparation activity here. So we're going to be uh, walking around the map. We do spot someone here looking uh, around the window there for the Demogorgon. A little bit of mind games coming through. A beautiful shred from Marco from Master coming through into another shred, breaking the pallet and now pushing the survivor into the corrupted area, giving him access to the main building and all that is around here. Yeah, Marco really making awful use of the Demogorgon add-ons, the shredded glasses and the black heart. But as I say that, maybe not because Marco did just M1 burst instead of using the black heart there. But either way, very good hit take from Paradox's throw, but a head-on play coming through already? 
Paradox absolutely showing off on his user movement, but it doesn't even matter! Marco's gonna get a down on the wrist at five chins! Absolutely cranked plays. Marco still has gave me a bit of a nodder there, to be honest. But Marco does have Noed to play around with in the end game, and I think we might be seeing a lot of action from the killer here, even with the basement hook. I think Marco is going to try and apply as much pressure as possible, really go for a lot of fresh stages, possibly. Generator in the distance is completed towards the other side of the map. But I mean, that's the first generator of the game happening after the first hook happened. And Marco now might just decide to progress his mid generator, it does decide to go back towards the main building, look around for any lurking survivors, but also wants to just apply as much pressure as possible because all you need are four stages. If you can get four strong stages on the survivors, you can pull through and you can get master the win of this game if you're Marco here. But it seems that Marco is just trying to make sure that no one's going to be able to save Brist from the basement here. And I don't think any survivors are really nurking nearby anyway because, I mean, what's the point? You want to get the generators done and it's super risky going down into that main basement, I think, Barn. Yeah, I agree. I mean, all Marco really needs to do here is uh, camp Frist to death in the basement and then get uh, a hook in endgame with Noed. So it, it wouldn't surprise me if it doesn't even matter about the gens being done in the meantime. We are going to have a beautiful firecracker timing on the stairs here. But now Marco is waiting for the BT to run out. He is going to be doing a little bit of tactical targeting onto uh onto our survivor here who was just unhooked forced penance was not applied it was not a protection hit our uh, our fangman is not protected right now beautiful pallet drop here and a vault of the window not uh not enough for marco to hit that shred unfortunately he's going to drop the chase forget about the tunnel and he's going to go and look for a fresh survivor to hook and a fresh survivor to chase as we see our third generator pop in the distance now, what do we see here? We see that Heim still has his throw pallet to play around with. Woo! Beautiful stun coming through. Hein really giving Paradox and the survivors a lot of time to complete the generators here. And we did see a third pop in the distance as a flashlight blind comes through. Look at the team play. Look at the distance that Heim just made because of that little bit of extra distance even after the, the uh, Barb's glasses stun came through. So... A very good play from Lincoln, getting the blind onto Marco there, and Hein just able to take some extra distance around this pallet. This might be a little bit greedy, Hein. No, it's not! Wait, it's this. Hein goes down, doesn't drop the pallet. Very well played from Marco, predicting. And no pallet save either there. Maybe if Hein would have optimally used the point tech. Could have possibly crawled over the ballot, although it just didn't happen. And you're looking at the third, um, the second fresh stage of the game, third hook stage in general. So all Marco needs to do here, I believe, is camp high. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Once he hits, uh, once he hits second stage. We should be okay. I'm just going to check here in the background with our match officials. I'm pretty sure, though, that if somebody does go to second stage here, like our poor Hein on the hook, that would be the win for Master, which would explain why we're doing a little bit of camping with the face. But uh, that's okay. Again, it's not that deep. If the players aren't complaining about it, no one else should be either. We are coming in for the two-man unhook again. We did need to get that save. Now we need no more stages. The next hook is the win for Master. So if any of our survivors here go down, that is the win for Master on Killer here. So we are going to have to play extra careful, but we are kind of stuck here at the TL wall. And it is wind going down, unfortunately, at that TL with the shred and the power of the Demogorgon popping him onto the hook and securing the win for Master in week five. Very well played from Marco, knew exactly what needed to happen, went ahead and just chased the unhooking survivor instead of Hein, who would have had the endurance status effect there from being unhooked. 
bet Marco's just gonna go ahead, regress the generator, celebrate a happy Demogorgon victory, taking set number three, getting master to win. I'm sure there are some cheers going on in the voice chat chat right now. Masters voice chat cheering for their killer Marco who did an incredible job pulling through for master here. They did have a rough first set, but really pulled back using their pick on the plague. A little bit closer on the tiebreaker, but they did manage to do it at four generators completed. The fourth stage was applied, that being not a unique stage, but a unique stage as well. Giving some extra points, really, really securing that victory if Masters calculations were even just a tad bit off. It doesn't even matter as Marco is now in chase with wind here Possibly just looking for her to come out just looking to get some extra kills just uh Just for some extra points just for some morale for the team that is Adrenaline coming through Absolutely cracked a uh, team play there from paradox using the communication to communicate that adrenaline was coming through it is still going to help with the um, with the points on the standing. Uh, if they can get the points here, there is still a reason for them to play. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they can always play for best results, and we do appreciate sportsmanship here as well in DVD League, so I think you'll find that even once the win con has been met, our teams will still play it out just because of that. Uh, it's always nice to play out the game instead of just give up or, uh, or attempt to go next and things like that. So we do like to see our players commit and finish the game. It's also good practice for them as well. A little bit of, uh, of extra, uh, extra play time here. We are going to be getting this next hook onto, uh, onto Lincoln. That is a fresh three points right there. And we've got Noed in play here that he's using to assert some dominance on these survivors and scare off our uh, our team here we do get the unhook though in the distance we are going to be running back to the shack uh, i think that's lincoln there big drop of the pallet not able to get the stun uh, i think we've got the gates open i'm not sure what the play is here we are protecting lincoln uh was that timing of the noed uh, that was a shred hit, but also the Noed did get destroyed. I'm not sure why Marco was trying to get the Noed hit earlier. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's actually gonna be a four out coming through from, from Paradox here. So, they do get some points on the board. It's gonna go into their standings, but obviously, Master, incredible performance. They did take the game very well played from both teams.